This morning, we bring you a health care story with many layers. It begins with this headline, Partners Healthcare is volunteering to take less in a new contract with Tufts Health Plan. But beneath that headline is a world of spinning changes that will affect hundreds of thousands of jobs and billions of dollars in spending in Massachusetts. Joining us to discuss the dynamics of this deal is WBUR's Martha Biebinger. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, Bob. Sounds like a very big and important deal, Martha. Tell us what's in this contract. Well, Bob, let's go back to Governor Patrick, who for more than a year now has been calling on hospitals to reopen contracts and take less money. Now, to this contract with partners, it's one of the highest paid hospital systems, you know, in the state. And they, at first last October, agreed to a contract where they lowered their reimbursement rate. And now they're doing the same thing with Tufts Health Plan. In this case, partners had two years left on a contract that was scheduled to increase at 6 to 7 percent every year. And partners has now agreed to take 2 or 3 percent. Here's partners CEO Gary Gottlieb. It's a pretty big deal to look at that contract and say, look, I want to rip that up and I want to take less money. That's a big deal. What it says is we've got a market that's dynamic and that that market is working. Bob Partners is also agreeing to move all of the Tufts HMO patients into a global payment contract. That's where doctors have to manage a budget for their patients' care. Martha, as I understand it, Dr. Gottlieb also says that Partners is doing this because the network realizes that rising health care costs are forcing cities and towns to cut municipal jobs and making life difficult for many families and also for state government. What else is behind the decision? Well, let's keep in mind that this is very unusual for a hospital to voluntarily say, give me less money than you were planning to, right? And so it demonstrates the pressure that partners in particular, but also many other hospitals, are under to cut health care spending. Hospitals are worried, Bob, that if they don't cut costs themselves, that the state's going to do it for them, going to step in and set rates. And this could really hurt partners in particular, one of the highest paid hospital systems. Partners is also under pressure from insurers who are charging some patients more now to use the high-cost hospitals and from doctors who are starting to balk at sending their patients to the most expensive hospitals for routine surgery or treatment. So if the hospitals, including partners, end up taking less money than they have in the past, at the same time that health care premiums aren't rising as much as they have in recent years, is there still a problem with health care costs? Well, that's a... That's a, um, an intense debate that's going on behind the scenes. Many of the hospitals, Bob, say no, that um, we have fixed this problem or we are fixing this problem in the marketplace. Um, and they point to this partner's contract as being an example and a, and a window into this debate. But economists say the long-term trend, Bob, is still cost that will consume many budgets. David Cutler, an economist at Harvard, says it's great that hospitals are taking these decreases, but there's room to squeeze out a lot more savings. Our best guess is that medical spending is probably about a third higher than it needs to be. It's entirely reasonable to say that over the next 10 to 15 years, we ought to be able to eliminate that. Cutler, who is advising lawmakers and employers and leaders in the health care industry, says the state should aim to keep all health care costs, not just hospital contracts, in line with inflation. Does the state need to enforce that goal uh, of keeping health care costs in line with inflation? Well, that's another one of the big questions in this fierce debate going on behind the scenes, Bob. If all the parties agree that health care costs should not grow faster than inflation, what would happen to hospitals and physicians who don't meet that goal? There's no agreement on that yet. But Governor Patrick's Secretary for Administration and Finance, Jay Gonzalez, says reduced spending like this contract that we're seeing with partners wouldn't have happened unless Governor Patrick had put some demands on insurers and providers. This is evidence that the governor's push on the industry to reduce costs is having an effect. And without government continuing to impose the pressure, these kinds of results won't happen. And these results, Bob, will affect the state's health care industry. It's about a seventh of the state's total economy. It is close to $70 billion a year. And so that's why we said back at the beginning that billions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of jobs are at stake in terms of uh, the state and the hospitals and the health care providers getting all this right. It's all swirling around this question of what is the state going to do to change the way we pay for health care, to try to rein in health care spending. Reining in health care spending will affect thousands and thousands of jobs. WBUR's Martha Biebinger covering all this for us. Thanks, Martha. Thank you.